Hey y'all, Will here, otherwise Zell Ray, and last night in the community discord for Once Human, we got some information about scenarios, the new season, a whole bunch of things that people were curious about, and we're finally having light shed on those. So we're going to jump right into it and see what it's all about. I'm going to be reading through it and also giving you a little bit of opinion. If you have any comments or curiosities or just want to express your own feelings on this, feel free to do so. I'm happy to look at your comments and have a conversation. So with that, let's get going. Starting at the top. About seasons and scenarios. What are seasons and scenarios in Once Human? What does the long-term game plan look like? We hope to bring various survival gaming experiences so the game has a little something for everyone. Also, we'll keep making updates to the game so it is always exciting to play. That is why we've chosen to give this game multiple scenarios. A scenario is the gameplay theme of a server. Once Humans Global Launch in July offered two scenarios to play, the PvE scenario Manibus and the PvP scenario Evolutions Call. In September and October, we're bringing in special events featuring new scenarios. The September scenario allows you to face confrontations among factions, and the October one will introduce you to an all-new map and challenge you to survive extreme environments. We are also working on scenarios featuring limitless PvP gameplay and longer durations. Additionally, a regular scenario that can be played all year round will be available in the future. Our plan is to release four new scenarios each year. Each scenario is set within the time frame of a season, with the duration of a season varying according to the specific scenario. A season will be split into several phases based on features of the scenario. The in-game content will be unlocked gradually as your server progresses, ensuring that you will always have something new to enjoy. Once you unlock all the scenario content and the season has come to its settlement phase, you can sign up for a new scenario, take all your gains, and start a new adventure. Alternatively, you can stay on the same server until the settlement phase is over. This phase lasts for four weeks in our current scenarios. With seasons and scenarios, we are dedicated to delivering an engaging and captivating experience. This is the long-term game mode we have envisioned for you. Okay, so that was a lot of information within those two paragraphs, but essentially what it's saying is that the entire game is broken down into scenarios and we were able to have two scenarios on release, the PvE Manibus and the PvP Evolutions Call. Next, we're going to have the PvP scenario Prism vs. Clash, which is a faction-based PvP event. Now, one thing I'd like to talk about here is that when I played through Evolutions Call, it was very similar to Manibus. Too similar, I'd say. But what I did learn and what I did glean from that whole experience is that even though there's a PvP event focus within the game, a lot and the majority of the entire game is PvE based. So don't feel like if you're a PvE player, you have nothing to do in the new scenario, even if the main event is PvP based. Now, what I mean by this too is that the Manabus Primor event that we have in Nightmare Mode is the premiere of the Manabus scenario, but Primors in general were the event that it surrounded. That's really what the scenarios are about, typically, so we're going to be seeing that go through. We're going to have dungeons, we're going to have fights, we're going to have bosses, we're going to have story. Those are all PvE elements, and then on top of that, we're going to have this main premiere event that will be Prism versus Clash. That's how I'm assuming this will play through, just to give you an idea. After Prism versus Clash, we're gonna enter a new PvE scenario that will be up north in the mountains with an all new map, and it's gonna be focused on extreme survival. So we're gonna be looking at keeping campfires maybe, or other things of the sort, so that we can stay in good health in that area. And the game is going to surround itself with those elements while still being a progression-based PvE type game. That's how I see these going through. If I am wrong, hey, sue me later. My bad. But that's how I understand the game and what we'll be going through. To run that home even further, we have this segment. What are the differences between the different scenarios? Different seasonal rules and objectives. In each scenario, you'll encounter unique seasonal rules and in-game objectives. For example, some scenarios may ask you to explore uncharted territories and secure rare deviations. 
while others will require you to form alliances with other metahumans, survive in harsh environments, and combat ferocious monsters. In those scenarios, you will have the option to either go solo or team up with the other players, or even align with factions to compete for valuable supplies. Different in-game experiences. New survival mechanics. Certain scenarios will introduce features that intensify the challenge of survival, such as harsher weather conditions or more demanding environments. Map and areas. Some scenarios have a new map. Enemy types and dungeons. Different scenarios may have special monsters. Configuring the right memetics and gear build is the way to deal with different dangers and threats. Even the same scenario can present varied combinations of environments, tag, bringing diverse survival challenges. Scales. The maximum number of players for each scenario will also vary. This is followed up in a general rule set post infographic that is talking about just that. It's highlighting survival mechanics, different potential maps, different enemies and dungeons that you might meet, scenario durations will change, and the scenario size will be bigger and or smaller depending on what the scenario is asking of you. This means we might find a solo or small group scenario that is played throughout two weeks, maybe something that people are used to when they set up a new seven days to die server or an enshrouded server that they want to play with friends for a week before they get bored. That might be a shorter scenario compared to a more long-winded scenario like how we had to set up for the Prime Wars and the different difficulties within the Prime Wars, which is going to be a longer scenario. We might even have longer yet depending on what they're going to be asking the players to do. We're unsure of all that currently, but that is really what it's trying to say. Next up is how do I sign up for new scenarios? In the final phase of the current scenario, you can sign up for a new scenario and start a new journey right away. I don't really like this because it's not really right away. We have three weeks plus of waiting before we get into the Prism versus Clash scenario. And I guess if you needed to, you can go into the Mana Bus non-novice scenario if that is something that they're bringing into play immediately, or it might have to wait as well. I know that I always had the question of what are they going to do with all these catch-up servers that have started so late into the season, and how are they going to be able to be merged in with people who are playing from day one? Because people will want to change servers and play with people that they weren't able to play with previously. I can think of a few examples in my community just alone. Anyway, if you prefer, you can choose not to sign up for a new scenario and remain on the same server, continuing your exploration and battles for up to four more weeks. During this time, you can always sign up for one of the new scenarios. If you haven't decided on which one to join when your server's last phase is over, your current server will be closed and your character will return to Eternal Land, where you can continue playing and sign up for a new scenario at any time. When a scenario is over, does that mean I will lose my in-game progress? And I do want to interject here. This is what people were really worried about, and they didn't really understand exactly what was going to happen, even though a lot of people could make a lot of broad assumptions from previous playtests that we have experienced. But I'm very glad that they're actually putting this into light right now. No, we value the effort and time you put into this game. Even when a scenario is over, or when you exit a scenario halfway, you can take away the rewards you've earned, except for some extremely rare cases and items related to scenarios and memetics. However, to ensure that each scenario offers a complete gaming experience and allows all players to enjoy the game regardless of their progression, we have the following rules in place. Your character will not be deleted. Your character name, body size, cosmetics, furniture formulas, friends, important materials, including star chrome, Christians, Mitsuka marks, silver keys, and more, battle pass progress and task progress will be forever retained. They will not be lost when you change from one scenario to the other. However, character leveling and memetics are considered part of the scenario experience and are closely linked to the in-game pace and balance, so they will be reset according to scenario rules. 
The weapon and armor blueprints, blueprint fragments, weapon accessories, mods, food recipes, and other important in-game progress resources of your character will be forever retained, and you can use them at any time in any scenario. The house blueprints, furniture formulas, and furniture of your character will be forever retained. However, when you start a new scenario, you will need to spend building materials to rebuild everything based on your house blueprint. We have optimized the house blueprint feature for better formula compatibility, allowing you to quickly make your house blueprint of reality even without advanced materials. Regular resources, material, medicine, ammo, and more that you've obtained, armor and weapons you've crafted, deviations you've captured, and calibration blueprints will all be transferred to your eternal land and forever retained. Upon entering a new scenario, you can bring multiple items with you as long as they adhere to the scenario's rules. However, please be aware that there is a limit to how many items you can bring along. This is to ensure that both new and veteran players start from scratch, promoting fair competition in a new scenario season. Of course, regarding the design of these rules, we'll make sure that everyone can bring their favorite content to the next season. As for energy links, due to their strong connection to the scenario pace and in-game trades, they will be transferred to your eternal land after a season ends. They will be converted to astral sand, usable for building your eternal land at a specific ratio. Items highly associated with scenarios and mimetic specializations cannot be transferred across scenarios. Mimetics will be reset based on level, allowing you to reselect mimetics and craft items accordingly to the specific scenario you are playing. So this was a lot of information trying to ease people into how to switch scenarios and what you can and can't keep. Let's just start with the things that you can't keep no matter what. That's a much smaller list and it's easier to get through. Will you keep your character level and experience? No, you'll have to start over at level one. Will you keep your map progress and exploration? No, that's going to go away too. What about anything regarding the memetic tree? Nope, that gets wiped clean as well. That's pretty much all the things that you will never retain. Everything else you'll be able to keep in some sentiment, yet you might not be able to bring it to every single scenario depending on the limitations that that scenario sets. Your tier 5 calibrated and modded armors and weapons. You do get to keep those and you can bring them along next time if you really like them. Deviations, you get to keep all those. That's something that you've earned, that you've spent time on. You do not lose those either. Your similar things like calibration blueprints and just standard materials such as medicines and bullets also get to carry along as well. Anything regarding your character's appearance and any territory modifications that you can think of that you've bought or earned, you get to keep. So any furniture that you've been finding in your Blackfell runs through the trash cans and cabinets, those are all yours for keeping. So good on you for collecting them. Anything that is like a hairdo, tattoo, any character or avatar customization, even if it's a nameplate or card, all get to be kept. Nothing gets deleted there. Now, what is confusing for a lot of people is you don't seemingly just switch from one scenario to the next. There are a lot of things that do get transferred over without you having to do anything in that regard, but there's going to be a whole slew of items that go to your eternal land and you have to spend a given currency to allow yourself to take special things with you, such as your deviations, to the next scenario. Now, not every deviation will be able to be brought over, and some deviations will be barred, but your character has earned them, and they're going to be waiting in Eternal Land until you can bring them on an adventure if they're your favorite thing to use. Finally, finishing off the written text, how do I take items from my Eternal Land Depot into a new scenario? You will have a certain amount of resource points before entering a new scenario. Each item you choose to bring into the new scenario will cost a specific amount of resource points. 
The required amount varies between items and can be checked in the game. The number of your resource points refreshes each time you join a new scenario. As I was saying before, you use these resource points and bring things over, but you are limited to a certain quantity. Now, there are a lot of takeaways from this, and I think I covered most of them pretty well. If you still have questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. And I know one thing that's going to ring out probably above most other ones is that they're making a PvP server before a PvE server when most of the player base is PvE based. And I do understand where that's coming from. Yet, I do want to say again that don't limit your exposure and experience of the game to not playing PvP because there are going to be scenarios and they are going to be the new content and there might not be as much PvP experiences in these PvP scenarios as you may think which is good to keep in the back of your mind because there's going to be a lot of people striving to see the new content that the game is bringing to the table and it's going to be very boring for those who are going to be adamant about never playing a certain type of server when we have more scenarios and especially for players coming into the game later than a lot of the audience that came in day one yeah it's going to be different they get to pick and choose but for the day one audience we're following a track it feels like and seeing the release of content as it flows out now i will say if you're looking for a group or a community to go through these scenarios back and forth as they come out feel free to look at our community that's exactly what i'm doing and while the whole community that i have currently might not do that i think a good portion of them will we've been crushing content in the scenario that we're currently in on mana bus for the pve and i'm very excited to see what we can do going forward in the other pvp scenarios the survival scenarios and new pve scenarios that will be coming out if you are interested in the description below is a link to the discord for my community in general feel free to hop in say hello if you don't like it leave afterwards no hard feelings i get it people have troubles when they're trying to find a community that fits them and my community might not be what you're looking for but hey if you want to give it a chance and see what it's about thank you again if you made it this far through the video I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this helped you understand what's going around and not get lost in all the sauce and the words and images that were floating around. I know it can be difficult trying to get all that information in at once. Yet, thanks for watching. Later.